May May, thanks very much for joining me. Welcome. Thank you. You're here bending the ear of politicians that haven't made up their mind yet about The Voice. How have you, how have you gone? Have you had any wins? Yes, I think we have. Um, yesterday we started. Uh, we spoke to three politicians who really wanted to know about The Voice, uh, Voice to Parliament, and um, the conversations, they were conversations we had yesterday. I think it went really fantastically in regards to, they more or less wanted to know about the messaging what kind of messages they could give out and also how to approach the people, you know, in the communities about a voice to parliament. Yeah, it's gone pretty good. Uh, Bob, you're both signatories of the Uluru Statement from the Heart. One of the questions that keeps being asked is, what will the voice actually do? How do you answer that? I would find the voice would be like an advocacy group for us and making sure that we have um, <clears throat> involvement with drafting legislation, especially when it affects Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. And it's part of all that decision making and um, autonomy, I guess. Mm. Mame, why is that important? Why is it important? Because, you know, it's been a long time coming. I mean, you know, years gone by, we, there was never a voice for our people like on the ground in the communities and um, it's about time that being recognised in the constitution which will have a voice to parliament enshrined there. We need our own people on the ground that will be chosen to represent us, to make decisions for us on a self-determination basis and just to reflect that we are, you know, we are human beings and it will happen. You know, we need to have our voice there. When you talk about this being a long time coming, what does it feel like for you to have not had a voice? Well, it's been very frustrating. It's been hurting, um, you know, especially with things that have been happening for a while in the last 15 years. I mean, it's, it's always been negative stories coming out about um, I always refer to our mob, Torres Strait Island Aboriginal people. Um, and, you know, it's about time where, with this government that's in now, the Labor government, they've realised, the Prime Minister's really realised that, you know, we should be recognised and we should have our voice. And, um, and it's about time it happens. I mean, to have a... To get recognised to uh, in the Constitution and to have a voice in Parliament... I, in my heart, I feel it will happen. I mean, this process needs to happen now. And if it doesn't happen now, well, we just got to keep trying. Uh, Barb, having a voice is one thing, but it doesn't mean much if there's no listening happening, does it? Mm. Unfortunately, over the last 15 years of somebody living under the Northern Territory Emergency Response slash intervention plus stronger futures, what we've always wanted was the government to listen to how the way Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders are feeling and where we want to go with their lives and actually run our communities and our organisations the way we want and not be subjected to um, federal policies, federal government policies as well as territory and state policies as well. So we actually want to you know, have our seat at the table to have a voice to make sure we are voicing our concerns when it comes to legislation that both Canberra and the territory, state and territory governments are actually drafting. You know? So we want to be at the table to help influence government change and that's where the listening needs to happen. You're acutely aware of, of this. You, you live in a town camp in, in Alice Springs. You're a youth worker. You're involved uh, with so many of the big conversations that have been happening nationally. Linda Burney, the Minister for Indigenous Australians, said that she didn't think that the situation that we're seeing in Alice Springs would have happened if there was a voice. What do you say to that? I believe if there was a voice prior to 2007, we wouldn't have had an intervention. We wouldn't have had stronger futures and we wouldn't have